I welcome you all to this session. In this session today, we shall solve one or two numerical problems, those are related to steam power cycle. So, you know that uh, if we try to recall in this module of this course, we have discussed about steam power cycles, I mean different cycles starting from the Carnot cycle to the uh, binary fluid cycles. Now, we have seen that efficiency of the Carnot cycle is the maximum that is what you have read even in your thermodynamics course, but you know identifying a few issues in from the perspective of operation as well as design, there are a few practical cycles we have also discussed them. So, we have discussed about that efficiency of the Carnot cycle is maximum, but if we talk about simple ideal Rankine cycle, reheat Rankine cycle and also then regenerative cycles, just starting from the simple ideal Rankine cycle, several other modifications that we have discussed are essentially for the improvement of the thermal efficiency of the cycle. So, till now we have discussed about this particular aspect that is thermal efficiency from a qualitative perspective that is you know that Carnot efficiency is maximum 100 percent, while efficiency of the you know uh, ideal Rankine cycle or Rankine cycle with reheating uh, efficiency reduces. So, to have a quantification of the thermal efficiency in a steam power plant, uh, we need to solve a few problems. So, accounting for this aspect, today we shall solve two different problems. One problem I have taken from the simple ideal Rankine cycle. This problem we shall illustrate here only to have you know fair idea about the solution of a problem. So, let us first read out the problem statement. A simple ideal Rankine cycle with water as the working fluid operates between the specified pressure limits. The rate of heat addition and rejection and the thermal efficiency of the cycle are to be determined. Given that boiler pressure is 6 mega Pascal, condenser pressure is 20 kilo Pascal and steam temperature at the exit of the boiler is given 500 degree Celsius. So, from this input data we need to calculate the heat addition, heat rejection and thermal efficiency. In fact, if we can calculate the amount of heat which is rejected to the you know cycle and the amount of heat which is uh, added to the cycle or rejected from the cycle knowing these two parameters we can quantify the efficiency. So, if we try to solve this problem, you know that uh, I will discuss today though it is a very simple problem, but I have taken only to make you understand that there are a few steps. So, whenever you are solving any numerical problem on this particular topic, the first objective should be to draw the schematic depiction of the steam power cycle. So, let us do it. We have boiler, then turbine and after doing work steam is taken to the condenser from there collected steam is pumped back to the boiler. So, 
So, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3 and this is 4. Basically, we have tried to, so this is the, this is pump wherein work is added, this is condenser, so this is Q out. this is W out, this is Q in. So, this is the schematic depiction we have discussed so many times. So, uh, now it is given that uh, the cycle is operating between two specified pressure limits. So, then what we need to do? We need to write down the quantities which are given in the problem statement. So, boiler pressure, uh, so before going to write them, let us draw the T s diagram. So, if we try to draw the T s diagram, so you know that we have learned it. T s diagram this is constant pressure line. So, this is P condenser. P condenser and this is P boiler. So, that is the most you know simple cycle just you know the modification of the Carnot cycle, because in Carnot cycle we have seen that you know there are issues like partial condensation and finally, uh, handling such two phase mixture pump cannot be used. So, compressor is used and while we are using compressor and that too it is two phase mixture it is because of the higher specific volume of the you know stream power consumption needed power consumption by the compressor is a substantial part of the work output. So, that is why it is not a real cycle. So, here if we try to recall nothing is mentioned about whether stream is reheated or not, stream is superheated or not. So, you know that steam temperature at exit of the boiler is given 500 degree Celsius temperature. Perhaps this is the line which is giving us a clue about the quality of steam at the exit of the boiler or at the inlet of to the turbine. So, let us complete it first. So, this is the point 1, this is point 2, this is point 2 and then we do not know whether point 3 will be on the saturated vapor line or it will be in the superheated regime. So, what we need to do as of now what we know? We know given quantities are boiler pressure is given 6 mega Pascal. So, P 2 will be equal to P 3 equal to 6 mega Pascal. Okay? Because we could not map the point 3 on this T s plane till now, we are waiting to understand whether you know 3 would be on the saturated uh, vapor line or it will be in the superheated regime along this line, whether it is on the superheated saturated vapor line or it will be in the superheated regime, it will lie on this vapor in pressure line. So, this is P 2 equal to P 3 equal to 6 mega Pascal, condenser pressure is 20 kilo Pascal that is P 1 equal to P 4 will be equal to 20 kilo Pascal. Since we could not locate point 3 on the T s plane, we also could not locate point 4, right? because 3 to 4 is the isentropic process that is uh, you know occurring inside the turbine. So, next is T 3 is given that is 500 degree Celsius. So, this data are given because 
temperature at the exit of the boiler is 500 degree Celsius temperature. So, now which is most important to understand at this point of time is where the point 3 is uh, you know whether it is uh, on the such whether it is it will be on the saturated vapor line or it would be in the superheated regime. No matter whether it is on the saturated vapor line or superheated regime it will lie on the special line that is the boiler pressure. So, to understand that let us quickly uh, look at the stream table right. You have learned to you know read data from stream table in your uh, thermodynamics course, but I am not going to discuss all those part, but what we can do you know that if we can since this is the exit temperature of the stream at the boiler. So, that is the inlet temperature uh, inlet condition of stream uh, I mean condition of stream at the inlet to the turbine. So, if we can we know the temperature and the point 3 will be on this special line. So, we know also pressure. So, P 3 is also 6 mega Pascal that is what I have already written we know T 3. So, now we can look at uh, we can read this point I mean whether the point will be in the superheated regime or the saturated vapor line by looking at the steam table. So, let us quickly look at the steam table. So, if we go to look at the steam table. So, we have seen that pressure is 6 mega Pascal and temperature is 500 degree Celsius. So, we shall go to first saturated water pressure table not the temperature table because pressure is mentioned. So, if we know if we look at the saturated water pressure table and if we can find out that corresponding to that pressure that is 6 mega Pascal what is the saturation temperature. If the temperature saturation temperature is less than 500 degree Celsius temperature then definitely point 3 will be in the superheated regime or if the temperature what is given 500 degree Celsius if it is equal to the saturation temperature at that pressure then it would be on the saturated vapor line. So, let us look at the you know uh, saturated water pressure table, but the given temperature is 500. So, it is well above than the saturation temperature. So, definitely point 3 il, point 3 will be in the superheated re regime. So, now if we uh, go to the slide then we can locate point 3 in the. So, that means point 3 will be in the superheated regime. So, here this is point 3. So, this is point 3 and this is point 4 right. So, point 3 state point 3 is in the superheated regime. Next we have to identifying the location of point 3 in this T s plane. Next what we need to do? We need to apply just steady flow energy equation that we have seen that we have discussed across all the components. So, basically if we apply steady flow energy equation to the boiler, steady flow energy equation to the turbine and steady flow energy equation for the process which is there in the condenser as well as steady flow energy equation to the process which is there in the pump then we can find out what would be the work and heat interaction right. Essentially if we need to quantify the efficiency as well as the amount of heat which is added or rejected to the cycle. So, we need to quantify uh, we need to apply the steady flow energy equation to different uh, components and knowing fully that boiler is a heat interacting device. So, we can calculate what is the amount what is the amount of heat being added to the boiler the amount of heat you know which is added to the boiler turbine is a work interacting device. So, basically by applying the steady flow energy equation we can quantify the work output from the turbine. Similarly, condenser is again a heat interacting device because I think uh, there is no work output from the condenser. So, what we can do we can calculate this quantity that is Q out and finally, the amount of work which is added to the pump also can be calculated by applying steady flow energy equation to the process which is there in the pump. 
and I am not going to discuss because already you have discussed we have you know quantified and you have also established the mathematical form. So, straight away what we can do we can start this we can start solving this problem. So, we will assume you know that this is the you know a uh, kind of uh, understanding you should have before you go to solve a particular problem. You know that since it is a pump and which cannot handle two phase mixture essentially the quality of a uh, thermodynamic state of the liquid thermodynamic state of the working substance at point 1 should be the liquid. So, it is the saturated liquid we know the pressure. So, if we go so basically you know H 1 would be equal to H F corresponding to 20 kilo Pascal and P 1 will be equal to uh, P 4 equal to 20 kilo Pascal. What we need to know? What we need to know, you know, know also that is V 1 that is specific volume that is V f corresponding to 20 kilo Pascal. So, all this uh, are needed again H 1 equal to H f at 20 kilo Pascal that is specific volume of the uh, specific enthalpy of the liquid corresponding to the pressure at 20 kilo Pascal. Again we need to look at the steam table uh, then we can solve uh, we can we can find out. So, you know that if we go to the uh, steam table then again we have to go to saturated water temperature table because saturated water pressure table. So, pressure is 20 kilo Pascal now we can see 20 kilo Pascal V f is 0 0.001017. So, if we go to this particular row that is 20 kilo Pascal V f is equal to this and similarly we also can get H f from this you know enthalpy uh, table. So, enthalpy would be 251.42 and specific volume of the liquid will be 0 0.001017. So, now again we can go back to the slide. So, we can write that uh, H 1 I am writing directly. So, H 1 will be equal to 251.42 kilo joule per kg and V 1 is equal to 0 0.001017 meter cube per kg. So, that is what we have calculated. Now, so what would be you know uh, W pump? So, W pump that is nothing but V f at 20 kilo Pascal into P 2 minus P 1. So, you can understand in fact, I had I had taken enough time because maybe to discuss a particular aspect I had taken time which is even beyond the normal time which I was supposed to take, but I had taken it only to make you understand only to discuss the things more carefully. So, now we had discussed that work added to the pump is nothing but it is not PDV rather it is VDV. So, whether the process is a reversible isothermal process or reversible adiabatic process work done is always VDP that is what we had established in one of the previous classes. So, what is VDP? So, this is the volume of liquid corresponding to uh, pressure that is the condenser pressure and so this is the change in pressure. In fact, the pump is responsible to build up this amount of pressure. So, this quantity would be equal to you can understand. So, this quantity will be equal to will be equal to 0 0.001017 into 6 mega Pascal. So, 6 minus 20. So, if you calculate it you will get it 6.08 kilo joule per kg. So, this is basically the amount of work that is added. 
So, work added to the pump. Okay. We had written small wp because it is specific work because we are trying to express quantities per unit mass per kg of the working substance. So, that is 6.08 kilojoule per kg fine. Now, so basically if we go back to the previous slide, we know enthalpy at state point 1 and then finally, we had find out the work done needed to complete the process 1 to 2 right. What we need to know? we go to the next stage that is the boiling. So, the amount of heat required to be added to the boiler for conversion of for the conversion of water into steam is nothing but change in enthalpy and that is what we could write from the express from, from the application of steady flow energy equation to the process which is there in the boiler. So, you know I can straight away write that small q in ok. So, if I go to the so, this is process 1 to 2 and finally, I will go to process 2 to 3. So, that is q in equal to S 3 minus H 2. So, this is specific heat added because again I am trying to express the quantity in terms of I mean in the, in the specific form. So, per unit uh, you know kg of the working substance per kg of the working substance. So, this is q in small q in. So, this is q in. Now, H 3 you can calculate right because you know try to understand H 3 you can calculate because you know pressure you know temperature. So, again I am just trying to recall whatever we have learned from our thermodynamics course that is two you know independent intensive properties are required to specify the state right state postulate that you have studied. So, you try to understand once we know temperature and pressure then perhaps we can calculate other properties, but since it is a pure substance we cannot apply the had it been a uh, you know an ideal gas we could have applied the ideal gas equation to calculate other properties, but since it is working substance we need to you know consult steam table. So, by looking at the steam table to be precise superheated uh, water table we can calculate other properties like enthalpy, entropy, internal energy etcetera. So, what we can do we can calculate H 3 from the superheated table, but we also need to calculate H 2 by how we can calculate H 2 look at the process. So, you know enthalpy at state point 1 right we also have calculated work done oh, sorry, oh, sorry work which is added to the pump. So, again if you apply steady flow energy equation you can see enthalpy H 2 would be equal to H 1 plus the amount of work which is added to the system that is in the pump. So, what we can do we can write first that H 2 equal to H 1 plus W pump. So, H 1 already we know that is 251.42 kilo joule per kg. So, this is 251.42 plus the pump which is used here consuming this amount of energy for its operation. So, this is 6.08. So, total if you calculate it will be 257.50 kilo joule per kg, which is very important because you always need to write unit otherwise uh, you may come up with you know wrong answer. So, this is the H 2. So, we had we have calculated H 2 just by applying the steady flow energy equation to a process which is there in the pump and then we need to. So, H 2 we have calculated, we have calculated H 2. So, we need to know what is H 3. So, already we had you know we have discussed that at that pressure since point 3 is 
lying in the superheated regime. So, we have to go to the superheated table to calculate the enthalpy knowing the pressure and temperature at that point. So, if we go to the next slide. So, we can go here. So, P 3 equal to 6 mega Pascal, T 3 equal to 500 degree Celsius. So, from the superheated table, we can calculate H 3. So, let us uh, I am just for this problem trying to consult steam table repeatedly because only to you know uh, make you understand by how we can read data from the steam table. So, again if we go to the steam table where we should go? We should go to the superheated table. So, we know uh, pressure and temperature. So, this is the saturated water pressure table. So, we have to go to the superheated table. So, this is A 6. So, this is superheated water table. Now, as I told you this is superheated water, but temperature is given at the extreme left co you know, column, but either we can look at the temperature from there we can calculate other properties, but you know this is pressure is given P is equal to 0 0.01 mega Pascal. So, P is given 6 mega Pascal. So, 6 mega 6 mega Pascal that is this table. So, you know this is the table uh, that is top left corner and what we can see 6 mega Pascal and then uh, you know that uh, temperature is given 500 degree Celsius. So, this is 500 degree Celsius temperature pressure is given. Now, all these are the uh, several properties. So, basically you need to know enthalpy starting from the first one that is specific volume, then internal energy and third column is the enthalpy and fourth column is the entropy. So, what we can calculate? We can calculate both en enthalpy and entropy. So, for this 600 mega Pascal corresponding to this temperature 500 degree Celsius temperature enthalpy is 3423.1 kilo joule per kg and entropy is 6.8826 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. So, we can go to because entropy is also required why it is required I shall explain immediately uh, next to this task. So, I am now going to the slide. So, what we can calculate? Enthalpy that is 3423.1 kilo joule per kg and S3 that is specific entropy is also 6.8826. This is kilo joule per kg Kelvin. So, this we had uh, obtained from the steam table. So, once we have calculated S3, we can calculate small q in that is equal to 3423.1 minus H 2, H 2 is 256.50. So, this is 256, you know 7.50. So, 257.50 and that is coming as you know. Uh, so, this is q in. So, you can calculate what would be the q in. Okay. Now, uh, what we can do? Uh, we can calculate what would, what would be the q out. So, this is the amount of heat added to the boiler. So, this is the first part of this problem. If we go back to the problem statement, you know the rate of heat addition. So, this is the you know uh, this is the total amount of heat added to the size in you know, boiler, but you can understand if we know the mass flow rate 
of the working substance. So, if we multiply this quantity with that m dot, then we can calculate what is the rate at which it is added to the cycle. Okay. So, this is uh, what is the heat addition. Now, last uh, another part is because see we also need to calculate heat rejection that you can see that would be in the condenser and finally, if we can calculate the amount of heat rejected from there we can quantify the thermal efficiency. Okay. So, what we can do now? We can go to the next process. So, this is let process. So, this is process 3 to 4. So, this is isentropic expansion. Isentropic expansion, what you can see because few minutes back I told that uh, we need to calculate entropy as well. So, we had calculated entropy corresponding to that particular uh, uh, state point 3. Why it is? Because if we know the entropy at state point 3 and that would be entropy of state point 4. Why? Let us look at the T s diagram. So, you know this is isentropic process 3 to 4. So, if we know the entropy at state point 3, then entropy at 4 will be equal to uh, will be equal to entropy at 3. So, that is S c equal to S 4. Now, why? Because again I am telling state postulate you need to know two intensive independent properties to calculate other properties. So, you understand very well that till now we had we have calculated work done work added to the pump heat added to the boiler finally, we can we need to calculate the turbine work output. So, if we apply the steady flow energy equation to the process that is occurring inside the turbine the work interaction between system and surrounding will come out or can be written in terms of the enthalpy drop. So, basically you know that work out would be equal to S 3 minus H 4. Somehow, we have calculated S 3, but we have to calculate H 4. right? So, if we need to calculate H 4, then if we focus at this particular point on the T s plane, we know only pressure because the point 4 is lying on this condenser pressure line. And only by knowing one property we cannot calculate other properties from the steam table. What we need to do? We need to calculate, we need to know at least another one intensive property. So, now knowing the process is isentropic and we have measured the entropy at state point 3. So, we can write S 4 will be equal to S 3 and P 4 is known. So, you can understand that S 4 equal to S 3 equal to 6.8826 kg kilo joule per kg kelvin and P 4 equal to 20 kilo Pascal. So, these two properties are good enough to find out the enthalpy at state point 4 by how again this is something we need to understand. See uh, if we go to the T s diagram the state point 4 is inside the vapor dome. So, that is I mean quality of 0.4 is neither pure liquid nor pure vapor. right? So, it is a two phase mixture. So, the 0.4 is not lying on the saturated vapor line nor it is lying on the saturated liquid line rather it is inside the vapor dome. So, it is a two phase mixture. So, you know that again you have studied in thermodynamics uh, we know pressure we know entropy at state 0.4 by knowing this we need to calculate what would be enthalpy. So, what we can do very quickly you know that this H total H is equal to H F plus X 4 into H F G. Right? So, if we try to calculate in you know enthalpy at state point 4, then we need to calculate enthalpy at 20 kilo Pascal plus X 4 into H F G at 20 kilo Pascal. So, that we will get from steam table provided we know this fellow that is the quality. So, this is quality of the mixture. Had it been pure steam it would have been 1 quality would have been 1 but it is not the pure steam because it the point is not lying on the saturated vapor line. So, what we can do? 
we need to first calculate H4 because HF corresponding to 20 kilo Pascal, you can get it from steam table. HFG corresponding to 20 kilo Pascal, you will get it from steam table. But if we need to calculate H4, then what is essential to know is X4. By how we can calculate? So, now you know it is very important that we know entropy. So, somehow we have calculated S4 that is 6.8826, 6.8826 equal to S f at 20 kilo Pascal plus X4 S f g at 20 kilo Pascal. S f g plus 20 kilo Pascal. right into x4. So, now we know this. So, basically x4 will be equal to 6.8826 minus S f at 20 kilo Pascal divided by S f g at 20 kilo Pascal. Can't we calculate Entropy, entropy of liquid saturated liquid and SFG corresponding to 20 kilo Pascal from steam table we can. So, let us again go back to the steam table and we can see. So, 20 kilo Pascal we have to go to the saturated water pressure table. So, saturated water pressure table this is and it is 20 kilo Pascal. So, this is the case. Now, you can see this, this is 20 kilo Pascal. Right? So, you can see that 20 kilo Pascal, it is clearly written what would be H f, what would be H f g, what is S f, what is S f g. So, you know that 20 kilo Pascal, so if we traverse along this horizontal line, we can write H f that is 251.42 already you have calculated, H f g is 2357.5. S f is 0 0.8320 and S f g is 7.0752. Check it because you know that S g is 7.90, but the entropy at state point 4 is less than S g. So, it, it indicates that it is it is not on the saturated vapor line and it is in the two phase zone. So, so we have we know the point 0.8320 is the S f 7.0752 is S f g and 2357.5 is HFG, 251.42 is HF. So, knowing this, we can again go back to the slide and we can you know calculate the enthalpy at state point 4. So, if we write it, so this is 6.8826 minus what I told 0 0.8320 divided by this is 7.0752 and it is coming x4 is coming 0 0.8552. So, you can understand. So, this is you know 85 percent right. So, uh, 85 percent is steam remaining almost 15 percent is water. So, this is two phase mixture. So, now if we plug in the value of that over here. So, this is 251.42 plus 0 0.8552 that x 4 we have calculated from here and h f g that is 2357.5 right. So, if we calculate it and it is coming as 2267.5 kilo joule per kg. So, this h 4 this x 4 we have taken from this. Okay. So, we have calculated H 4. Once we have calculated H 4, now we can calculate the work uh, done. So, this is work W out from the turbine that is H 3 minus H 4. You may ask me why it is not H 4 minus H 3 because it is because of this enthalpy drop we are getting work output. So, enthalpy will drop in the course of flow of steam through the turbine and it is because of this reason you know we will be getting 
work output. Essentially, thermal energy will be converted to the mechanical energy in terms of work. So, heat that is added to the steam that would be converted into work in the turbine. So, now we, we have calculated you know H 3 we have also calculated H 4. So, H 3 we know because because H 3 is the you know that uh, already you have calculated 6 mega Pascal you know 500 degree Celsius. So, uh, so H 3 would be equal to from the uh, let us write here that 3423.1 kilo joule per kg. So, this is from the superheated table. So, this is from the superheated table. Because we know pressure and temp temperature. So, you know P 4. So, this is already H 3 already we have calculated. So, now what we can do? We can calculate process 4 to 1. So, W out that is H 3 that is nothing but 3 4 2 3 point 1 minus H 4 H 4 is 2 to 6 7 point 5. So, 2 to 6 7 point 5. So, this is the amount of so, this is the amount of work done. So, right. So, this is work done. So, this is work done by the steam. So, this is rather I can write work output from the turbine. Work done by the steam on the rotating part of the wheel. So, this is work output. from the turbine. And finally, process 4 process 4 to 1 that is you know constant pressure heat rejection. So, constant pressure heat rejection you know that if we look at the T s diagram. So, this is 4 to 1, we have calculated H 4, we also know H 1, because H 4 we have calculated by this you know linear interpolation and H 1 already we know because it is H f corresponding to that pressure 20 kilo Pascal. So, so H 4 is this quantity and H 1 that is this quantity. So, this is basically H 1. So, what we can do? We can quickly calculate Q out that is H 4 minus H 1 and that is nothing but 2 to 67.5 minus 251.42. So, this is kilo joule per kg. So, this is second part of this you know problem that is amount of heat rejected from the cycle right. So, this is another answer of this problem again I am telling if you would like to calculate rate at which it is rejected, we need to know the mass flow rate of working substance and then we can. So, if you quant if, if you multiply this quantity with m dot, then that would be kilo joule per second. In fact, if you multiply by you know kg per second. So, try to understand that if we try to multiply with m dot that is you know kg per second, then perhaps it will be getting kilo joule per second. So, you know uh, kilo watt in fact joule per second watt. So, basically kilo watt that is the rate at which it must be rejected. So, we need to know because we are everything we have calculated per unit you know per uh, unit kg of working substance you know uh, uh, whether it is steam and steam water. 
So, this is basically we have calculated. Now, finally, which is very important that is thermal efficiency. So, thermal efficiency eta thermal, if we assume that all the processes are internally reversible, right. So, that is nothing but 1 minus q out by q in. You can check and if you plug in the value answer will be 0 0.363. So, that is 36.3 percent right. So, try to understand efficiency is very very poor right. Also by looking at this expression h uh, q out. So, you can understand the amount of heat that must be rejected in the condenser because we could not consume the enthalpy in the you know uh, turbine. So, you can w out you see you see enthalpy at the inlet to the turbine is 3.23.1 and enthalpy of steam at the exit of the turbine is 2 to 67.5. So, a substantial part of enthalpy is you know uh, going out from the turbine without doing any work and it is because of this reason thermal efficiency of the cycle is only 36.3 percent. Before I go to complete uh, for this uh, session, you know I, I, I would like to complete this session, I would like to tell you you know that you also can check whether efficiency is coming as 36.3 percent or not by how you can you know w out you know q in. So, basically you can see whether you can calculate efficiency w out by q in and you can check whether the efficiency is getting uh, equal with this or not. So, you know that while you are calculating w out, so basically you have to calculate w net. So, you know that uh, we are also uh, giving you know this much amount of work input to the cycle. So, this much amount of work must be subtracted from the turbine work output and that is the net work output. Right. So, if you would like to calculate efficiency, then this much amount of work must be subtracted from the W out and that work should be divided by the heat input and that is the thermal efficiency of the cycle. So, to summarize you know uh, what we did today, we have you know by illustrating this very simple example, we have seen the steps, the procedures by which rather we have discussed methodically all the steps which are involved to solve this type of problem. I would suggest you before going to solve this type of problem what you need to do, you need to first draw the schematic diagram and then it would be you know uh, convenient for you all to solve the problem if you can map all the processes in TS plane and afterward only just by you, to, you have to apply steady flow energy equation and you have to consult with the steam table. So, with this I stop here today. Mm -hmm.